Hey YouTube, it's AC. Welcome to the 225th episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors. All right, so to start off, let's talk about jailbreaking. Now, we haven't received a new utility since I recorded last week's episode, and I definitely recommend watching that one prior to viewing this video, because in that one, I'll go more into depth on the overall jailbreak status and kind of the current situation as it stands right now. So be sure to watch that video first and then come back here for the latest updates. So to start off, let's go over a quick recap. First of all, MSS 2015, or the Mobile Security Summit, took place recently at which a number of influential jailbreakers on the scene gave presentations, including Taiji's own XN, their main developer, their team leader, Pimskex of the Evaders, Comax, and Posix Ninja of the Quantum Chronic dev team. And while I released a number of videos preceding the event stating that the group would not use it as a platform to release the next untethered jailbreak, being one for iOS 8.2 and all iOS 8 based devices, a number of individuals as well as viewers and people People across the web took the event to be the unofficial confirmation of the next jailbreaks release date. That simply wasn't the case. That didn't happen. And Taiji actually clarified the situation as well and dispelled some rumors. So since I recorded for last week's episode, they released the following official announcement on their site, quote, on 27th March, Taiji Jailbreak Team held the 2015 Mobile Security Summit MSS in China, Beijing. The purpose of this summit was to create a platform for world top jailbreak developer to have an open communication and then prepare for the better untethered jailbreak in the future. The development and release of a jailbreak tool was restricted to several factors. However, what Taiji Jailbreak Team wanted is to release the jailbreak of iOS 8.2 as soon as possible possible, but at present, rumors about Taiji Jailbreak Team have already released the iOS 8.2 Jailbreak tool we're spreading in the internet. Any information outside of Taiji Jailbreak Team official news channel should not be trusted. At last, thanks for focus and supports from media and users. To you all, we will do our best to go forward. So although it is convoluted, seeing as English is likely Taiji's second language, we can take a few things away from this. Primarily the fact that the group was planning on releasing a jailbreak for iOS 8.2 following the public firmware's availability. However, there were several unknown and unforeseen complications that arose for the group that they didn't disclose that prevented them from releasing said jailbreak. Now, at this point, we likely won't see a jailbreak for iOS 8.2 as I've been stating up until now. However, we can expect a new jailbreak. Taiji is working on it from their announcement. We now have a confirmation that the group is working diligently on creating a new untethered jailbreak utility for release to the public, but again, they likely won't waste it on iOS 8.2. And that's actually the smart thing to do. So as I mentioned in last week's episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors, iOS 8.2 was released several weeks ago. At this point, iOS 8.3 is on the horizon, slated for release at any point in the foreseeable future. As of now, we don't know when iOS 8.3 is going to be made available, but it could be at any point in time. Again, it could be Monday, it could be the following week, or it could even be when the Apple Watch is released on the 24th of this month being April. So if Taiji were to jailbreak 8.2 right now and release a new utility, then essentially Apple would have ample opportunity to patch the jailbreak in iOS 8.3, so that way when they release the firmware, the jailbreak will no longer be usable, and that's definitely not what we want. We want the jailbreak to remain active for as long as possible so as many individuals can take advantage of it, especially those who will inevitably update their iPhones to take advantage of the upcoming Apple Watch. So for those of you who will purchase the Apple Watch, you will need to be running iOS 8.2, which means that if you're already jailbroken on iOS 8.1.2 or earlier, or even 8.2's beta one or two, you will need to update to iOS 8.2, the official public version, before you can fully use the Apple Watch. So hopefully we'll have a jailbreak utility before then. Again, definitely remain hopeful because think of it this way. We've received more jailbreak utilities in light of Taiji, Pangu, and PP's appearances on the jailbreak scene in this past year than in almost all previous years, including those for iOS 5, iOS 6, and iOS 7. What's more, Taiji also updated their site a second time. Of course, they didn't release anything, but they stated that they will be posting the videos from the 
the talks of the jailbreak developers that I mentioned earlier on their website. So hopefully we'll be able to glean additional jailbreak information from those as well. And they might even shed some light on the next untethered jailbreak from Taiji. I'm thinking maybe XN's video or the video of Ray, which is Taiji Jailbreak's team leader, will again provide some additional insight on iOS 8.2, the group's next jailbreak, and kind of moving forward as we get to iOS 8.3 and beyond. So with that said, of course, just be sure to stay tuned. I will keep you guys completely covered and release a new tutorial when the next jailbreak is available. So just be sure to hit that subscribe button down below next to my channel name if you have yet to. Of course, you can also follow me on Twitter and like me on Facebook for even more updates. And now next up, let's go ahead and move on to a leaked or an alleged leaked iPhone 6C component. So last week and the previous week, there were some rumors going around suggesting that Apple would release not one, not two, but three new iPhone models in 2015. One of which being the iPhone 6C, a lower cost updated version of their previous C series being the iPhone 5C. Now these leaked images are very similar to the rear housing of the iPhone 5C. However, there are two major key differences. The first of which being a new pill-shaped cutout for the LED flash module. And while that kind of seems like we're going backwards, because when you think about it from the iPhone 5S, which featured the pill-shaped flash cutout, we went to a more circular one because Apple is able to integrate both tones into a single circular module. It makes sense because the C series is definitely one that has to be compromised seeing as it will be sold at a lower price point so again it's logical apple would have to make sacrifices as far as the latest technologies are concerned furthermore it also features improved microphone and speaker cutouts next up an ipad pro dummy unit was leaked it was actually found out after it made its rounds through the Apple blogosphere that the images were originally publicized back in February. But essentially, for those of you who don't know, oftentimes case and accessory manufacturers will create dummy or mock-up units to essentially test their products prior to a device's release. Sometimes they can actually be accurate and to spec of the device. Other times they're just completely fake and they're just based on speculation. But what's really interesting about this one is the fact that it has two port cutouts, one on on the bottom, presumably being for the lightning connector, which is standard on all iOS-based devices, and it has been since the release of the iPhone 5. And the second one's actually on the side, and it's reminiscent of the new USB-C connector that Apple's using in their new MacBook. So will the next iPad or will the iPad Pro feature USB-C? Who knows? It's going to be interesting to find out one way or the other, but like the device itself, it's just a rumor for now. We don't even know if Apple's going to release a larger 12-inch iPad Pro. I will keep you guys completely notified along the way, though. And now next up, let's talk about the upcoming Apple Watch. A few new details were made available thanks to Apple's recent minor site update. First of all, pre-orders will start on April 10th at 12.01 a.m. Pacific time, 3.01 a.m. Eastern. Now, of course, while we did know that the device was going to be available on April 10th, and we could assume that it would be available at about 12 a.m., Apple officially confirmed it by updating their site. They've since changed it back, but again, we can't expect to pre-order the Apple Watch on April 10th at 12 a.m. Now, next up, let's talk about the protection plan for the device being Apple Care Plus. Some leaked images reveal three purported price points for the plan for the various devices. So up first, while it can't be confirmed at this time, the Apple Care Plus plan for the sports edition might cost $59, whereas the Steel, $79, and the edition, the gold version, $999. And what that'll get you for the first two being, again, the sports, as well as just the regular Steel Apple Watch, an additional one year of protection, so extending it up to two years total, as well as access accidental protection. And the same thing goes for the addition. Again, you have that accidental protection in there as well, but you get an extra year on top of the regular version. So bringing it up to three years total warranty. All right. And that concludes all the news I wanted to talk about in this week's episode. The new MacBook will actually be available next Friday. So I'm incredibly excited for that. I'm going to unbox it for you guys and create a number of videos for you. So be sure to stay tuned and let's quickly talk about my giveaways. So I am giving away a brand new iPhone 6 
6. For those of you who don't know, it's incredibly simple to enter. All you have to do is navigate to freeappsfast.com inside of Mobile Safari, sign up for an account, which is very basic, follow the on-screen instructions to do so, start downloading some apps, come back here, rate this video up, and then leave a relevant comment down below in the comment section containing your referral code, which is actually the piece that appears after the link in the fourth tab at the bottom. It's not the link itself. And once you do that, you'll be automatically entered to win. Now, last week I said that that giveaway was going to conclude soon, and yes, it is. It's going to be over next week when the new MacBook is released. So be sure to get all of your entries in now while you still can to possibly win a brand new iPhone 6. And I have a few more giveaways that I think you guys will find interesting as well. And since last week's episode of Best Tech Info and Rumors, I covered an all new tweak inside of Cydia that helps improve the functionality of the iPhone 6 and the 6 Plus, especially when using them with one hand. And in that video, it's a $3.99 tweak that I highlight, and I'm going to be giving away 10 copies. I teamed up with the developer of the tweak itself, so be sure to watch that video if you're interested in possibly winning that awesome tweak for free. And if you guys want to be updated more often, such as when I release new videos like this one, covering things such as jailbreaking, because of course I'm going to keep you guys completely covered, I'll have a number of videos from jailbreak updates. Hopefully, there won't be too many more of those to full fledged tutorials once a new utility is released. Just be sure to like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, add me one of your circles inside of Google+, Plus. follow me on Instagram at ICUID, subscribe to my secondary YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash ICUID, and until next time, this is ICU, signing out.